Old Well, written by yours truly, Raven White Dove. This story is told in the present tense by using the word you. All that I ask is that you close your eyes and enjoy the story. There is no waking up and choosing a selective understanding of only certain knowledge without including all to master the greater picture. For instance, you cannot add 4 plus 4 to find 9 when 8 is the common answer, nor can you get from A to Z by skipping LMNOP. The awakening doesn't work that way. In the beginning, you bump into new thoughts, new facts, new truths your minds can envelop and understand. And from each inner or outer well you peer into, you come upon nine more to examine. As the wells continue to multiply, one can get overwhelmed by too much too soon, that a person will decide which ones hold more meaning to their observation, leaving the rest for another day's contemplation or review. We usually pour our attention into the one that draws our amazement to it, leaving the rest for later. But then there is this one well, off in the distance, larger and deeper and darker than the others, that beckons you to it, but your uncertainty makes you weary. It makes you tremble to consider visiting it, and yet, tentatively, you tiptoe over to it, stopping along the way to have a look in others, drinking from their fount of knowledge and new awareness. Slowly, over the long path around, you manage to find yourself at the King of Wells, the golden chalice surrounded by a crown of glory, if you will. Trembling just a little, sweat beating, heart pounding, you peer in its, into its murky depth, but something within causes you to reel back in horror. You squawk and stumble behind you, falling on your ass, whimpering and crying, stunned to the core by the view within, scared like a tiny child facing a hungry, hungry monster. You sit there at its base, shocked, yet weeping, screaming aloud that it's all a lie, that you will not believe any of it. And jumping to your feet, you suddenly are running away, tearing through the meadows as if you are being chased by demons. Rain begins to pour from the blackening clouds, so you find refuge in a distant barn you saw earlier in the day. And like a child, you climb a ladder to the loft, throwing yourself into a bed of straw, wailing and crying in outrage. Terrible emotional anguish sears right through you, rising in waves unbidden. Your thoughts race and anger burns like fire. Pain swells within you in torrential waves, tearing you apart, shattering your mind into a thousand shredded pieces. You can't believe it. You won't believe any of it. You just won't. Soon a dear couple you know well, passing by, hears your cries and comes to your aid. Your friends offer you a shoulder to cry on and a soft tissue to dry your tears, but you scream for them to go away, to never return again if they know of or believe in the old well's tales found back in the far meadows. Sadly, quietly, your friends leave as you have commanded them to do because they have met the King of Wells, listened to his lessons, and found trust in its bountiful knowledge of things. Later, another friend passing by hears crying within the clapboard barn. He comes in finding your heart rendered and sits close to comfort your tortured cries. This gentle friend offers you black tea, a hot buttery croissant, and the willingness to listen to your pain. You sit up and tell him the terror you witnessed at the old back well. Your eyes glint with rage, mad fear, and woe-filled pain your friend's eyes warm and they begin to share what they've learned from the old well and the far meadows. But horrified you scream, beating his chest with fury and rage, sending him away telling him never to return. And throughout the day more friends stop by, sent on their way. They send for your spouse and your child to go to post haste to calm the squall that was heaving within you. Even your mum was called upon to go to you to perhaps comfort you, bringing you back from the edge of madness, breaching through the old barn walls. Each one, carrying gifts of food and drink to nourish your body, arms to cradle you within, and love's purity, but 
Each one confesses to their time with the old well and the sacred meadows of antiquity. There they each listen to his truths of old, humbly resounding to the knowledge that his long past offers. They themselves have sipped from the well of knowledge and of truth, coming away more awakened to their purpose and their reason for humanity's aspirations at this time. Each person that came to bring comfort, acceptance, and love were sent away upon the formidable arms of resistance. Rage continued to be inferno, blasting hot lava, assaulting each person who brought tenderness to soften the truth's meaning. Recklessly, shattered thoughts fled the serpent's tongue as it sliced hearts into ribbons of sorrow. No words were left unsaid. No fist was left unpunished. Even the barn's old posts were kissed with blood as the pounding flesh kept coming. And over time, callers stopped coming by to leave plates of food or other items of comfort inside the rickety door. Family and friends drifted away, leaving you to your sorrows. And slowly over time, torment and anguish turned to mental exhaustion, cobwebs, and a collapse of the ego within. And every ruminating thought was sifted through and poured over until they were bled dry, turning to find dust beneath you. Every tear had been cried. Every wail had been trumpeted throughout the quiet lands. And the bleeding finally subsided, and your very breath had turned dank and brittle in the mildewed darkness of the craggy barn. Weakened and fragile but ready, you crawled down the ladder, stepping out into the sunlit fields gingerly, blinded by the glaring light of the sun you've not seen in over three moons passing. Slowly, you stumble to the meadow where the wells spend their days, touching lightly your old friends who once taught you so many truths not so long ago. Peering over their circular walls, you whisper their names as they respond with love's delight. Warmth begins to flood you as your heart remembers your visits and their long teachings of yesterday's promise. You also recall the wells telling you of the ways black magic once torn through the veils of Eden, freeing deception to conquer truth, truths that were yearning to find their way home now. Gaining strength, you hurry to each one, whispering, singing, crying their names out as tears of joy wet your smiling cheeks twirling around the trees, bare feet dancing upon the golden grass and the red clover strewn about. Laughter, mirth, and high spirits rise from your belly, bringing witness as your human friends come to see the cause of such delightful commotion. And every well echoed back the ecstatic vibration of love's calling to the butterflies and the rabbits, the deer and the songbirds to come forth to have a look. So dazzled by the life streaming through you, your every cell touched by happiness, pulsating radiantly, that you hardly notice your friends or the outer force awakening to your pleasure. You dance and twirl and laugh so bliss to be alive, connecting with your old teachers, loved by their joy's reception. And suddenly, in the peripheral, you notice the old king well, standing alone in the back meadow. You can see his weathered stones now covered in vines, old ivy and moss, half broken and fallen, scattered around his face. He appeared so forlorn and so ancient, he seemed desperately in need of love's repair. Quietly, most tentatively, you walked him gently, touching his old bones with your fingertips. And with a deep breath, you lean over to peer inside to whisper his name, When your heart stops and your breath catches and you are rocked to your core when what you see looking back at you is not at all what you remembered. Instead, you witness the most magnificent, most awe-inspiring love you've ever seen and ever felt. Love so unconditional, so inescapably non-human that it rocked you, nearly toppling you from your feet. Swirling within its depth were all the stars and galaxies in brilliant hues of gold, copper, and silver, creating vortices drenched in frequencies that could never be life within this dimensional reality. And at the bottom of the old well, you could see all the oceans and seas colliding into and gently caressing one another, culminating into waves of delicate, 
lacy foam and lather, clear and luminescent like shimmering crystals. And all around were rainbows of colors known and not known to human vision, with energy spinning and rising, breathing love and swell so luminous that your heart felt as if it were about to implode with ecstatic joy. It was as if all that was divine was pouring from his vessel into you, showing you every bit of the universe within the universe. Grabbing a hold of you, drawing you into his vibratory magnificence, and you are captivated. You cannot look away. Your body trembles as if every cell within wishes only to burst free into blazing beams of love, and everything holy within the well is rising to meet you to lift you from your feet and to carry you to other worlds too sublime to imagine. You could feel the old well entangle within the rising waves of consciousness emanating from your body and the etheric body surrounding you. The consciousness within him is feeding you from his infinite well of knowledge. It is accelerating your growth by amplifying your DNA with the universal cold frequencies. You convulse gently, holding fast to the well's walls, so concerned your body would just float away in ecstasy. And to the old well you whisper, Why? Why are you giving this to me when all I ever did was reject you and abandon your truth to hold tight to my own perilous sorrows? Why am I deserving of this after what emptiness I had once given to you? And with the most loving voice, the old well spoke, my child, no road to wisdom is an easy road to travel. It is fraught with bumps and curves and holes, sometimes so deep that they can swallow you whole just to spit you out in pieces. It is the same with every heart that is not yet ready to hear the words of truth. And one never becomes ready by demand or extortion. One becomes ready through preparation and extraction of layers sometimes so deep that they are unseen and unknown even under the prying fingers of a warrior's love. It is not about one's timing that matters, my dear. What matters is simply the arrival of the soul and the ability and readied willingness to receive the treasures within my sacred but humble pool. Curious, you reply, but but I do not remember the swirl of love and sacred magic from before. I only remember the knowledge that you shared with me and knowing that you were wrong. So very, very wrong. And what I remember is the black goo creeping towards me and the treachery and denial of nature that wanted to rise to claim me. And I could not bear such lies or such horror and such suffering. For I felt that you must be the lowest wrong, so horrified was I. Tears began to slip once again from your eyes, softly, and you began to shiver, reeling back in time when your mind snapped, descending into an abyss you feared you would never manage to leave. Holding to the well's old rim, you heard the old well speak once again from a distance. Truth, my child, is never wrong. It is only whether your mind and your heart can or will receive it. I am only that which I am. I am neither wrong nor am I right. I simply am all that I am and was ever born to be. And in that vein of awareness, in knowing who and that which I am, I can only be the presence of perfected love. I have and always shall be love, for love and truth are intermixed as they coexist as lovers within my deep well soul. I was never anything less than this love, nor was I ever less than the truth's knowing. It is simply now that your mind is free to bear witness to all of me, and thus, my child, all of you. All of you in a much more freed realization of self, of me, and of this troubled world. Sitting quietly, taking in the words of the old well, you feel your mind expand beyond its former borders. You can see and feel the truth of the wise well, and you hungered for more. After a while, you gently spoke. So, it's all true then. Everything you showed me before, it is all true, isn't it? And the old well spoke firmly. Yes, 
Yes, it is, unless your people rise to slay the dragon once and for all. But it must come from the human mind's choice to change the course of action, and thus reality as it stands now. And through your kind and the magnificent power of the animals in fur, in feather, and in fin, a new earth, earth can be born. It is meant to be born from the sacred readiness of love, because, my dear, this old world is perishing like the Atlanteans did long, long ago. Resets don't only destroy outdated paradigms, but they are given to upgrade to the new and most vital resources waiting. And chewing on your lip, winding your hair around your index finger, wondering about your role in all these changes, you query, what am I to do? What piece of the puzzle is mine to share? Be you. Know and express honorable love at all times. Live in peace and ask your human tribe to do the same. Unify and gather and rise into your soul's calling. Return to the earth and feed yourselves. Live, but live on your own terms. Love, but love diligently. Give no attention to the dark ones. Reject them and own your own sovereignty now. Let them be gone. Let go. Leave the grid. You must leave the grid, restoring your lives to nature. No longer live by documents, certificates, IDs, or numbers. Take in no toxic substances, nor wait in negative occult thoughts and systems. Gather together and dream in a new world, letting go of this world of old. You must let this one go, free her, and rise to be the leaders of the new dawn's calling. Crying, yet feeling your heart swell within your warrior soul, you sat against the old well's broken walls, thinking on many things. Your mind began to race backwards, forwards, sideways, turning upside down and inside out. You felt all the entanglements of energy being drawn away from you that belonged to the vile ones. You could see their fibers leaving your body and the energy all around you. Their webbing untangled itself, floating away, only to be swallowed by the old well itself. You felt yourself empty out in so many ways, allowing the black goo you saw long ago and the black pools leave your body, heart, and soul once and for all. And in a whisper, as if thinking out loud, you said, but you are so rickety and worn, so very fragile now. You were once strong and cared for, but now even you are a shambled mess in need of repair. And the old well declared, surprised, It is not I who is worn or fragile, but it is you who sees me this way. Just as you see the black goo leaving you now, you once saw my waters all fetid and slimy, and yet my waters are liquid pools of crystalline light energy. I am but a king, and it is you who are tired from holding on to the world's corruption and lies. You once held strength in them. You cared for them like a beautiful garden, though filled with snakes and thorns. You were ignorant by the way of forgetfulness that happens in this reality's dream. It is now that you are awakening with your new awareness as fragile and not yet formed, but the bright news is, you will build a new circle of strength around yourself now. You will cultivate a new garden filled with everything life-giving and fulfilling to your soul's calling. I know this because you are one of the chosen ones to create this new earth reality. Slowly, gently, with hearts wide open, all of your friends who have begun lingering about, waiting, began to encircle the old well and you. Your tribe, who themselves seek to be awakened too, and all the animals who live within the broad meadows of life, tending and caring for the old well, and all the wells amongst him. Your friends gently touch your shoulders, holding you warmly to their hearts. Tears flowing and laughter echoing amongst the trees, you whisper almost mutely, Thank you. Thank you for everything. And I love you as you stroke the well's ancient bones one last time, and you can feel the well's love pouring into you once again, gently, as if by knowing your readiness, your loved ones turn you to the rising sun, walking you towards home. And in a final glance back, 
You see just how magnificent and cared for the well suddenly looked. Every stone was in place. Gorgeous lavender plants and every colored rose, rosemary and low-growing thyme glistening under the bright blue skies, planted perfectly at his base. A beautiful blue jay sat preening his wings on a branch above the old well, while bunnies and groundhogs were grazing all about on clover and fallen blackberries. Behind the round stones you could see a large wolf sleeping, with a bee darting above his nose, and curled up to his belly is a gorgeous baby fox snoring and timing with the wolf's quiet breathing. Turning back towards home, you knew that life was going to find its way now. Together as one unified in our renewed simplicity, we had a chance, an opportunity to make life work. Possibility was everywhere there was love, and love was all that from this moment forward would fulfill you, to be the wonder of your days, that and your grandest memories of your time with your greatest teacher, the old well. Thank you for listening, and I do hope you enjoyed this beautiful story. If you like what you hear, please be sure to like this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Subscribe to my channel and go ahead and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. See in the description how you can support my channel to grow bringing you the best content that I can. Thank you so much for visiting and for your support. This is Raven White Dove, signing out while rising in love.